Hello everyone. Welcome to the third episode in our series about testing websites and web apps in real browsers using NetWatch. In our previous episode, we learned how to test common scenarios in the web using three powerful techniques. Here's a quick recap. Finding elements, interacting with elements and asserting elements. We find using the browser.element.find APIs, interact with click and send keys, assert by getting the attribute of the element and then using dot assert as using contains, equals and matches. If you missed the previous episode, I'll add a link to it in the description. Today, we'll learn some advanced techniques and use cases in web testing. This will also help you understand the extensive capabilities of what Nightwatch can do. I'll expose you to the following concepts. Test hooks, keyboard shortcuts and clipboard, OS and browser info, executing client JS, actions API, iframe, async await, multi-tab interaction, and emulating geolocation. We'll go through all these concepts one by one. You can pause the video and run these tests as we write them or run them all together at the end. I'll add markers to each concept in the video so you can jump directly to it. Okay, let's jump in. Test hooks are special functions that allow developers to perform actions at different stages of the test execution process. This is the home.spec where we left off from the previous episode. Here, we always want to go to the home page of our Nightwatch website. We do that using browser.navigate to slash. But we write it in every single test. So instead, we can add it under a before each hook that will get executed before each test is run. Let's try that. You also get a browser function inside the before each hook. And then we can remove the navigate to in the other test. We can also maximize the browser using window.maximize function. We can also close the browser after each test by running browser.end in the after each hook. You can also execute something before or after each test file using before and after hooks. If you want to run some code in relation to the test runner, you can do that using the global test hooks in the config file. I'll add a link in the description for you to read more about test hooks and global test hooks. We learned how to simulate key press using send keys in our previous post. So shortcuts including copy paste should be fairly straightforward. But clipboard is tricky business. Pressing control or command or shift using send keys will hold that key until keys.null is pressed, which will release all the held keys. But as clipboard isn't directly accessible for us to test, we check its contents by pasting it on an input element using the keyboard shortcut Control v or Command v and checking the value attribute of the input element. Let's test the scenario where we click the copy button in the home page and verify if the text is copied. First, we find the element with the name copy and click it. Then we click on the search icon and then find the input element inside the search and then do command and v. If you are using a Windows or a Linux based machine, you might want to replace the command with a control. Now the copy text should be pasted in the input. Now we look for the input again, get the attribute value and assert if it contains np minute night watch. As we are finding the input element twice, I'm going to keep it inside a variable and find it once. Let's run this test. It's passed. I'm using Nightwatch plugin for the VS Code editor to run these tests individually. It has a lot of features including reporters and autocomplete, enough content for another video by itself, but I'll add a link in the description for you to download it. In the previous example, we had to change the control or command based on the platform, Mac versus Windows or Linux. What if the test runner also understands which platform it runs on? Here's how we do it. We can find the details of the browser and the platform the test runs on using browser.capabilities object. The most common used variables are 
platform name, browser name, and browser version. Let's use it in the previous test to enable it to run on multiple platforms. First, we check the platform name, convert it to lowercase, and if check if it includes the word Mac in it. After we find if it is a Mac, instead of the command browser.keys.command, we check if it's Mac, send command, otherwise send control. You can use this technique to write tests that run on multiple devices and browsers. Next, let's execute some client JavaScript in the browser. This can be done using the execute script function. It takes in three parameters. First is the script itself. It can be a string like winter.location.reload which will be eval or a function and the function will be executed. The second parameter is the arguments that we can send from the test runner's context to the browser's context. This takes in an array and sends it as the arguments for the script function. The third parameter is an optional return function. Whatever is returned out of the script will come here and we can use it. Let's test a scenario where we run a JS in the client to increase the size of the logo and change the text of get started. Then we look for the button with the new text, click on it and verify if it leads to the getting started page. Let's call the execute script API with the function that will get executed in the client. We'll send the new text as a array that will be sent as a arguments to the function inside which this is the client JS that will get executed. We'll find document.query selector and find the get started button. And then we'll change the inner HTML with the new text that we want, which is client side execution. We also make some CSS changes to the logo and the color. For us to notice the changes, let's ask the test runner to pause the execution. We can do this using browser.pause. This will be the number of milliseconds the test runner will pause before continuing on to the next command. Now we'll find the button with the new text and then click on it. We'll verify if it leads to the getting started page by checking the title. Let's run this test. See, we can notice the changes and it has passed. The Actions API provide granular control over exactly what designated input devices can do. Nightwatch provides an interface for three kinds of input sources. A key input for keyboard devices, a pointer input for a mouse, pen or a touch device, wheel inputs for scroll wheel devices. This can all be done within the Perform API. These are the available functions in the Actions API. Let me show an example of how to use this. We start with the perform function inside which we get initiate the actions using by calling this dot actions. Let's store it in a variable. And then we can trigger all user actions from this variable. Clear, click, context, click, double click, key down, and so on. Iframe is one of the trickiest aspects of the web. These embedded iframes render a completely different web page and have their own browsing context and document. It allows for a new and non inherited web page inside US. Nightwatch has a way to switch to these documents using the dot frame method. It takes an identifier, which can be any of the following can be the ID of the iframe we are targeting or the number which is the position in the document starting with the index 0 or null which is used to switch back to the original browser. There is an iframe in the Nightwatch home page in the, in the bottom for the Substack subscription section. Let's write a test where we get into this iframe, type our email and click on subscribe and check if the subscription is done. We start with executing a client JS to scroll the iframe into the view and then since this iframe doesn't have an id we set an id ourselves once we once the id is set for the iframe we call the frame function with the id now we are inside the iframe we can execute every other find and assertions and interactions just like we do inside the iframe we find the element input and we give a email id to it and then we find the submit button and click on it. Now we wait for the alert to be present. Once alert is present, 
we accept the alert. After the alert is accepted, we check if the sign out is present in the iframe. Let's run this test. It's passed. Here we are scrolling to the bottom of the page because the iframe is lazy loaded. This, this is done using a client JS. We find the iframe and scroll into view. This can also be done using the Actions API. Let's try it that way. We start with the perform function. This dot actions and then use the move function and give the origin to be browser.element.find iframe selector. We find the iframe and send it to the origin. This does the exact same thing as running the client JS. It also scrolls down to the view of the iframe so that the iframe loads. JavaScript is a language built around the asynchronous nature of user interfaces. This was a pain for developers. To control the order of execution of our code, we started using callbacks. But soon, we ended up in callback hell, and we hated it. Then the beauty of promises was introduced, and soon, in ES7, we got a syntax sugar for it called async await. When writing our tests in JavaScript, one often comes across the same issue. Why isn't this code executing? This line isn't supposed to execute at this time. We at Nightwatch cared a lot about solving this issue with programming in JavaScript. We implemented an async command queue behind the scenes just so that you as a tester don't have to worry about it. But on the rare occasion that you are taking a value out of Nightwatch API and using it in a vanilla JavaScript, then async and await becomes essential. While testing, this is very unlikely, but if you do face such a situation, you can use the await to get the value out since every Nightwatch API returns a promise. I'll show you with an example. Let's say I find an element and then I get an attribute called data my data and then if I want to use it outside of Nightwatch APIs and send it to let's just say my API dot send of this we can get this value out using our weight. Since I are using our weight, we should make it an async function. And then const data equals our weight. We can get the value out of the promise using dot value. Once we get the data, we can send it to our APIs or to our console log, whatever we want to do with it. One of the scenarios we commonly come across during browsing is clicking a link that opens in a new tab. Nightwatch allows you to test this scenario by giving you an API to switch between different open documents. Let's write a test for the scenario where we click on the GitHub icon that opens in a new tab and check if the URL is correct. First, we find the GitHub icon in the home page and click it. Then we should wait for the new tab to be opened. In the browser, all tabs are considered windows. We do this using by calling wait until function, inside which until it becomes truthy, it will wait. Here we call the window.getAll handles function to get all the windows and we wait for the number of windows to be exactly equal to 2. Once this passes, we get all the windows again and we switch to the new window. We do this by using window.switch to function. All windows with the index 1 contains a new window. Once we switch to the new window, we check if the URL contains github.com slash nightwatch.js. Let's run this test. And it has passed. When your website or web app is changing based on the location from which it is being accessed, it becomes important to test it for all these locations. With the introduction of Chrome DevTools protocols, Nightwatch supports mocking the geolocation of browser during the test with just one command, set geolocation. To test this scenario, 
we'll go to varami.co and check our address for three different locations. For that, first, we'll manually visit the website and allow the browser to check our location. Let's write our test and let's take three locations for us to test. The API takes latitude, longitude and accuracy. We'll keep it as an array with three different locations and the te text we are going to test in the address. We'll iterate through each of the location, set the geolocation to, with the appropriate latitude, longitude and accuracy before navigating to the website. Then we wait for the address to be loaded. Then we find the address, get the text, assert for it to contain the text checking for. We wait for the loading by checking the class text muted to disappear from the geolocation address. We do this using wait until function and then we get the element, get the attribute class. Since we are taking it out of the Nightwatch API, we use await here and then we check if it doesn't include text muted in it. Let's run this test. There is Japan, there is USA, and there is Denmark. And the tests are passed. You can also run all the tests using npx nightwatch test. Now you can sit back, relax, and watch the simulation happen. Huzzah! All our tests have passed as expected. Nice! Today you learned some advanced techniques to do in-depth testing of websites and web apps to simulate complex use cases and scenarios using Nightwatch. You can use this video as a reference and feel free to come back to this whenever you face similar scenarios. In our next video, we will explore test trading patterns and introduce you to page object model. Shortly, POM. We'll go through different patterns that improve the structure and maintainability of your test code and you'll learn how to implement the POM. A design pattern that promotes reusability and modularity in your test scripts. Thanks for watching, happy testing, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like our video. And if you want to learn more about testing, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to stay updated.